In this video, we'll be looking at uh, the actual implementation of Rack32, uh, the details of it, and also how it's implemented in our code. Uh, so let's start with uh, some basic details of Rack32. Uh, in Rack32, uh, we have something called as clusters, uh, which is all we, we we also have that in Rack16. So what cluster means is it's basically a, uh, as the name suggests, it's a cluster or a combination of several sectors in fact 32 a cluster size is uh, 4 kb that basically means that it's uh, equal to 8 sectors that is 8 into 512 bytes remember our uh, sector size was 512 bytes so basically uh, a cluster in fact 32 is made up of 8 sectors uh, and a cluster is a basic unit of a, a file allocation table so you can always read and write only in terms of clusters so even if suppose you want to write one byte of data you will still use up one cluster uh, you cannot go below one cluster so even if you want to write one byte of data your file size will still be at least 4 kb and you can actually notice this uh, if you even now if you open notepad on windows uh, and just write one single character on it save the file uh, and then if you right click and see the file slice it won't be one byte it would be some kilobytes or something because uh, every file system can read and write only in uh, basic cluster sizes for fact 32 it's uh, 4 kb for ntfs uh, it would be something else but it would be some some cluster size all right so uh, for FAT32, it's uh, 4 kilobytes of cluster size. Uh, now, the basic thing uh, is the FAT table. That's the, uh, the basic thing of any FAT structure. So uh, let me find out uh, what does the FAT table contain. The FAT table is basically a... Uh, all right. Yep. So a FAT table, uh, this is what we saw earlier as well. We have FAT1, uh, we have the boot sector at the very start, then some reserved sectors, then the FAT table starts. We have two FAT tables, which are just duplicates of each other, so that one, if, even if one FAT table gets corrupted, the second is still there. And then we have data for uh, all the files and directories. So what the FAT table contains is uh, basically entries for each cluster. Uh, uh, indicating whether the cluster is occupied or free so uh, a fat table will contain uh, uh, in case of fat 32 it will contain 32 uh, bit entries for each cluster saying that uh, whether it's empty or or occupied okay uh, so that's the name fat 32 in fat 16 the entries will be 16 bit entries for uh, fat 32 it will be 32 bit entries uh, so let's look at uh, an example entries and I think then it will be more clear. So this is a basic fat table. Uh, the first two uh, entries, just ignore them. Uh, I've actually created a copy of it here so that we can uh, be more uh, flexible with it. So uh, let's assume uh, this is your existing fat table. What this says is, uh, the first thing it says is, uh, so let's start from here. This is basically cluster number zero, cluster number one, and this is cluster number two. Uh, what it says is cluster number two is not empty. There's some data in cluster number two uh, for some particular file, and that file does not end with cluster number two. Uh, what this number means is that uh, the next part of the file is at cluster number nine. So remember we said that it's like a linked list. Uh, in this picture over here each uh, each sector or cluster points to the next sector where the file the remaining part of the file is because it's very rare that you will have just a one cluster worth of file like only 4 kb of file so if you have a file larger than 4 kb you need to go over to the next cluster and you cannot randomly pick any cluster because that cluster may be occupied so uh, the fat table basically contains the address of the next cluster where the remaining part of the file is in this case it says that uh, the remaining part of the file is at cluster number nine 
so we go, go at cluster number rank read the data once the data is read uh, we again come to the fat table see that uh, now the file is still not over the remaining part of the file is at cluster number a these are hex uh, numbers so a is basically 10 so again we go at uh, cluster number 10 read the file uh, the remaining data of the file again come to the fat table uh, we see that uh, the next part of data is at uh, cluster number 11 we go there read it uh, similarly we do keep doing stuff now when we reach the last cluster the way we know that we have reached the last cluster is the entry will now be FFFF so if the entry is all F that means that the file is ending over here in this cluster there is no extra extra data in the file so basically this file uh, it's let's assume that it's a doc file it spans over uh, one two three four and five clusters that means it's a uh, its size is uh, five into four kilobytes that's around 20 kb of size so it's around 20 kb uh, of size of the file all right so that's how the fat table is, is useful now suppose you want to write a new file uh, somewhere so the first thing you will do is find a free cluster you cannot just randomly go and write now you cannot write at this cluster because it already has some data of some other file you cannot write here again because it has some data a free cluster is indicated by a zero in it so if uh, if the data in it is zero that means that uh, the cluster is free so this cluster is free uh, this is cluster number uh, seven all right so uh, cluster number uh, i think six or seven some somewhere all right so this cluster is free so we'll take up this cluster we'll write data over here and we'll put an entry over here now if this is the last if our file is in inside 4kb we only need one cluster so we'll just put fffff over here that means that uh, this cluster is not free but we are not pointing to any other cluster uh, we are the only cluster where the file is written all right if that's not the case if we need more clusters uh, our file is above 4kb we'll again go and find the next free cluster which is this and put this address over here so let's assume that this address is uh, 20 so we'll put that 20 over here and go and write the next cluster that is this cluster similarly we'll keep doing the same thing again if a file is ending at this cluster we'll put fffff here if not we'll find the next free cluster and then uh, again uh, keep doing it so you can see now uh, how uh, how basically a file write and uh, write is done you basically need to find a free cluster write your file uh, then find the next free cluster or if this is the last one put uh, relevant entry in the fat table and that's how the file write is done file read again you read the fat table keep following the links and you read the whole file keep in mind that uh, this table does not concern of what is the data in your file it has no it has uh, no interest in your data whether it's a doc format pdf format for it it's basically just ones and zeros written in some memory location all right so it has no relation with any data in the file uh, so this is how this is basically a fat table now if you suppose delete a file what you need to basically do is you need to make all of these zero so suppose if you're deleting your doc file you basically just ne need to make all of these entries zero marking this cluster as free so next time if someone wants to write they'll pick up this cluster uh, and so on and so forth uh, you can see one problem which arises here which is fragmentation which you might have heard of like you defragment your disk that's because uh, the file allocation table gives rise to fragmentation your file may be uh, one part of your file will be in here the other part will be in cluster number uh, 200 other will be in cluster number 1100 some some random places because if you keep writing and deleting a lot of files a lot of fragmented clusters will free up they won't be in s one single line they'll be at all different locations so that, that's basically fragmentation uh, all right so that's about uh, fat 32 uh, the allocation table now let's look at how we handle the whole thing in our code so uh, in our code uh, 
if you follow mean and the first thing is uh, this function which says that uh, get boot sector data what do we do over here is uh, we read the boot sector that is the sector number zero of the card uh, this remember this is the MBR of the card so this section we read this we first verify that we are reading the boot sector by uh, reading 510 and 512 bytes so over here uh, after SD read sector uh, the SD buffer will be populated again with 512 bytes at a time so we verify that uh, 510 is 55 and 511 is AA that's what uh, the boot sector signature has to be if that is the case uh, we read the first partition information so this line basically gets the first partition information that's uh, this part of the data the partition data it's 4 bytes 16 bytes sorry like and uh, then we read that sector so this now this sector which we get is basically our fat sector uh, the sector where the fat starts all right so once we have that uh, we just need to confirm whether it's fat 32 or fat 16 uh, currently we only support 32 so if it's fat 16 uh, we just don't do anything as such uh, so this part this function call will basically uh, give us the starting point of the fat allocation table from the boot sector data uh, once we have that we can directly start reading and writing so now here uh, later in the file we just say uh, write file we give some file name uh, we give the data to be written we give the length of the data and some extra parameters so let's look at this function what this does so this will be uh, write file will be uh, somewhere in the fat file here uh, now this will basically call uh, the fat32 write file uh, this is done this way so that later on if we want to add fat16 support all as well we can just put an if condition here saying that if fat type is fat16 we'll call the fat16 write file so uh, the main code doesn't change the main code only writes the file it's the fat code which handles uh, whether it's 16 or 32 so that's why this basically is implemented this way so let's look at fat32 write file So in fat32 write file, uh, uh, the first argument is the file name. Uh, the second is the current cluster in which we are, from where we are to start writing, or basically start finding the next free cluster. Uh, the size of the character data, and uh, whether we want to uh, read, write, or whatever flags we want. So basically in write file, what we do is, uh, we uh, first get, we first check whether the file already exists, uh, so we get the current cluster of that file name if the fight or file already exists and we have said that overwrite the file then fine we'll go ahead otherwise we'll throw an error uh, so after we make all those checks we need to find the uh, the directory table where to make an entry for the file uh, the directory table is the index I remember uh, we saw over here that we first need to make an entry over here so that uh, the index saying that uh, there is a file name something like this and it starts from this cluster and then we can go on with the fat table so that's what we are doing over here now we are basically making an entry in the directory table uh, the specifics of the directory table format I will not go into it right now uh, if you want you can just uh, search for that and you'll get that but it's not required as such uh, because this code in itself is quite stable so you will really need to modify this code so I'll just skip over that part right now uh, this basically handles the all the specific format of the directory table let's uh, not go into that once we have made that uh, we'll basically uh, start writing to the fat table so here uh, somewhere over here we'll, we'll basically keep writing to the fat table and keep getting the next free cluster from the current cluster uh, while we get the next free cluster we keep iterating uh, over here once we get it we write the file over there uh, 
we leave the sector again to verify that it is right is successful and uh, that's how we keep on going we keep getting the next cluster if we are full of one cluster and that's how the read part keeps on going similarly we have a read file uh, which will do the reverse of write file it will uh, keep getting the clusters from the fat table and uh, keep giving you data so uh, in your application code uh, you would rarely need to modify any of these files all you need to do is include fat sd ssc uh, and fat32 in your code fat16 is still not complete uh, it's not supported as such anyway it's outdated so just use fat32 uh, don't try to use fat16 so these are the files you just need to include uh, and this call the functions of read file and write file uh, you don't need to go into specifics of what they do uh, until you require some major change in them otherwise they are quite stable on their own and uh, you can just use them in your application directly so uh, yeah that's about uh, that's all about uh, fat32 and fat16 and uh, the whole uh, file allocation table uh, if you have any doubts about these codes or uh, in general uh, about the file allocation concept or in general uh, about the interfacing uh, you can uh, drop me a mail uh, over here and uh, i'll try to help you out right so yeah that's it from my side thanks